Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing really, really well and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you that are new here, I'm Becca, I'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist specialising in realistic coloured pencil drawings of animals. So we've been working our way through this badger tutorial um, and basically we've done most of the face, we've just got this little nose area left to do. So hopefully we're going to get this done um, for part five and hopefully this tutorial will be a lot shorter than the last one. We got quite a lot done in the previous tutorial. I think it ended up being about two hours long because I got very carried away. And then we've literally just got the body left to do. So I'm gonna show you how to like fade that out, make it look really gradual and also make it look out of focus. But for this tutorial, um, we're just gonna be focusing on this like snout area, the nose and that white fur around it. So making a start then, I'm gonna go in firstly with the cold gray one polychromo and I'm basically just gonna carry on from where we left off with that white fur. So you want to basically carry on and bring, in, bring that down just above the nose. So remember with drafting film, you only need a really light pressure throughout the whole entire drawing really, um, because it's completely smooth, it's got no tooth whatsoever. So, yeah, it kind of goes on really easily, it feels like almost like drawing on glass, like it's just such a weird texture to get used to if you've never worked on drafting film before. Um, but yeah, I know a lot of you really like it from what you've been commenting, so yeah, it's, that's good to hear because it's very, it's a very weird surface to get used to, especially if you're used to working with really like toothy, grainy papers and you like getting a lot of layers in there. It's kind of the opposite of that, but it means that you can focus on like more of those details and you can achieve such like realistic results with it as well which is why I really like it so yeah very lightly just working into that white fur and mainly working into where those subtle shadows are there's a few like layered bits of fur around the left hand side So I'm using that pan pastel um, from underneath that's kind of layered underneath because remember we've kind of layered this drafting film on the top of Fabriano paper. Um, that's kind of showing through from underneath. This is another good thing about drafting film is it's basically like tracing paper, like you can see straight through it. So you can layer things underneath it. You can also turn it round and draw on the reverse side, especially if you're working with drafting film that's matte on both sides. That's like another kind of hack really, because you are limited to the amount of layers that you can add, like simply because it's so smooth, it can't hold on to so many layers. Um, but you can work on the reverse side of it. So if you're wanting something to look really like dark or um, just add a bit more detail in some areas where it's literally not taking any more layers, if you turn it over, you can literally work on the reverse side. So it's quite good in that sense as well. So I'm actually going down to London tomorrow. Um, got a very early train in the morning and I think I, I've probably told you about this in every single part of this tutorial so far, uh, but I definitely mentioned it in the previous one that basically my work has been pre-selected for the summer exhibition at the Green and Stone Gallery in Chelsea. So I took it down, dropped it off the other week and then they actually selected it for the exhibition. So that was really exciting. So it's come around really quick, but the opening night and the private viewing is tomorrow evening. So I'm gonna go and head down to London first thing tomorrow morning, um, just so I'm down there. And then, yeah, maybe visit a few galleries in the day, do a bit of shopping or something, and do some work on the way down as well on the train, because I think it's about three and a half hours. Um, so yeah, it'll be exciting. So the private viewing is at the Green and Stone Gallery think from like six till eight. But yeah, it'll just be really nice to meet some other artists, see their work as well, and just see my work in like a professional space. So yeah, I'm gonna leave that there with the cold gray one. 
and I'm going to go in now with the warm grey one which is very similar but a bit more of like a creamy kind of beige colour. Again keeping that light pressure throughout and following along some of these lines that we've got down already. So basically just following along the same direction as the fur. And the fur direction does change quite a lot around the nose. See the nose is like the centre point and have the fur kind of facing in towards it all the way around. like that and then I think I'm also just going to briefly go in with the silver grey luminance pencil which is a lovely like pale subtle blue colour I'm just going to work this into those like cooler grey tones again keeping your pressure super super light I think I'm going to do the fur first and then do the nose and then just kind of merge those edges together right at the end And then you want to go in with your warm grey 3, which is a little bit darker, a few shades darker than that warm grey one. So you want to work into these shadows a bit more and it should show up a lot better with this colour. So we can start kind of differentiating different parts of the fur, how it's kind of structured, the direction of it and where all these little tufts are. And like the light and dark areas as well. Hopefully this has been good practice for like if you someone that struggles with drawing white fur because it's not easy especially like white fur on white paper um, or even black fur both black and white fur this has been a really good tutorial to kind of work through because it's pushing us to you know draw both and get them to merge together as well um, so yeah I've really enjoyed drawing this badger so far I've wanted to draw a badger for so long I think I've drawn like every single British wildlife animal apart from a badger. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a long time coming. So yeah, I just thought while I'm working through this um, badger drawing, I might as well record it and make it into a tutorial that you can follow through um, for YouTube because I've not done one for ages on YouTube. I think the last one was um, a King Charles Spaniel, which I finished a few months ago now, but yeah, I think you enjoyed that one. That was like an A4 size and that was also on Fabriano Artistico paper. So again, a completely different surface to this. Um, but the Fabriano Artistico paper is my usual go-to, especially with like commissions or um, my tutorials that I do for Patreon. Um, I tend to mainly work on the extra white hot pressed Fabriano Artistico paper. I just think it's a good like all rounder.
I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of the Buff Titanium Luminance Pencil, which is a really pale, like, yellowy cream colour. I'm just going to add a little bit to this, like, to the edge of this, like, dark section just above the nose, into that lighter bit of the fur. Just to make it slightly more off-white. Like that. Then I'm going to go in with the Raw Umber 50%. Um, this, I think we've used this quite a lot, especially around this area of the white fur, which is very much in the shadows. Um, this Raw Umber 50% has got a really subtle, like, khaki green colour to it, like an earthy green. And because the badger has been photographed outside and it's surrounded by what looks like a field or woodland, a lot of greenery, that seems to be, like, reflecting back onto the fur. In some areas you know it's not really obvious but um this color is like the perfect the perfect color to kind of capture that without it being too overpowering it just keeps it really subtle um so just literally working into some of those darker shadows in the fur I'm just going to add a super light layer of this raw umber 50 percent just so we've got a little bit of that green in there without it being too much There's also some other subtle colours in there as well that I'll be working with in a minute. like that and then I'm going to use two other colours to capture that really subtle like pinky lilac-y tone to the fur. So the first one is going to be the Warm Earth 40%. I use this literally all the time in my portraits. It's definitely a colour that I would recommend. Um, so again you just want to work into this darker bit just above the nose and add a light layer into that section to make it have that like beigey pink tone to it. And then you can bring it up slightly into that other little bit of fur just above it and maybe slightly just underneath the nose as well on this like tiny little strip of fur that we can just about see and then anywhere else where you can see a subtle pinky tone to the fur It's hard sometimes to know whether you've added enough or too much. And I find that if you just like stop what you're doing and take a look at the whole thing, um, you can kind of tell and gauge whether you need to add any more or not. Sometimes when you're focusing so much on one little area, it's hard to, to tell. But if you take a step back and look at everything as a whole, then it's much easier to see. Um, so I'm going to leave that there with the Warm Earth 40%. And I'm going to go in now with the Violet Grey, which is another neutral, lovely colour, but this is more of like a lilac -y purple. And I'm literally going to work into the same areas. So again, that dark bit just above the nose. And you want to kind of elongate some of those lines as well to help it merge with that surrounding fur. I'm kind of just letting my pencil brush across the surface like I'm hardly applying any pressure at all really. I'm kind of controlling where my pencil's going but my pressure is very very minimal.
So next up I'm going to go in with the warm grey 4 which is slightly darker again and you want to just work into these shadows and also work into the edges of where that black fur meets the white fur just to help it to merge. I think with white fur in general you always want to go a little bit darker than you might initially think and especially on this paper because it's very easy to kind of lift off that pigment again and make areas brighter. I'm also going to go in with the cold grey 5 and start drawing in some of these like darker lines and details that we can see within the fur. So you want to keep your pencil super controlled, also make sure it's really like pinpoint sharp so you can be really accurate and get those fine lines.
So this is just adding a bit more depth to the fur as we increase the darkness of those shadows. I'm also bringing in that detail as well. I always find when I'm recording tutorials, I'm always like super chatty at the start. And then I end up concentrating so much that I just forget to speak and forget to talk about what I'm actually doing. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you're still following. Um, but yeah, let me know if you would, if you like like more of the chatty sort of vibe or if you want me just to literally talk about what I'm using and like the techniques and stuff or you want a bit of both or more just quiet, less waffling. <laughs> yeah, let me know. Whilst I've got this in my hand as well, I think I'm also just going to loosely like map out the edge of the nose. Just so we've got the right sort of shape. Which we should pretty much have already because we've literally drawn round it right up to that edge. But just to give it a bit more definition, just going to go along the edge. So we know the shape. Also, just going to fill it in as well, very, very lightly. There's quite a lot of pink within the nose as well. There's like this little pink area at the front and it's quite, it's got a lot of purple in there as well. So this cold grey one is just going to be a good sort of base just to make everything a little bit darker right from the start. And also roughly like map out them nostrils. I know they're quite difficult to see because that area of the pitch is quite dark. But just draw in like a rough sort of shape of what you can see. Just so we've got the right proportions. I think I'm also just going to outline this pink area as well at the front of the nose. And then carry on shading. Make sure I'm not shading into that area because it's quite bright and pink. I'm also going to leave those nostrils blank as well because we can go straight in with a black, make sure the kind of really jet black dark um, in those areas. But yeah, and you just want to finish off adding in bits of detail into the fur, making some of those darker lines stand out a little bit.
So just to finish off that white fur, I'm going to go in with the white Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle pencil, which is the best white pencil you'll literally ever use. It's so pigmented and just like really, really good. And you want to work into some of these um, like lighter areas that we've left. If you just want to brighten areas up, just use this white to help to do that. But we are going to go in with the craft knife slice tool after this just to help us do that even more and get a bit more of a contrast. So then with the craft knife slice tool, you want to basically do the same thing. Look into those lightest areas and be really um, sort of precise with the bits that you're kind of removing. So you're kind of scraping away those top layers of pigment. And I say scraping away, but I'm literally just letting it brush across the surface. Like I said, there's no tooth whatsoever. There's no grain. So it just comes off really easy. It almost like slides off the drafting film. But in terms of that detail, it just elevates it so much. So if you actually spend time working to all these tiny little um, areas of the fur, adding in that detail, it just takes that realistic element from like here up to here. Like it's just the best tool ever. I can't believe I never used it until like, I don't know, maybe I've been using it about a year and a half now. But honestly, before that, I don't know how I survived without it. I literally love it. It also works amazingly well on Fabriano paper as well, but probably works best on drafting film simply because there's no tooth. So like I said, that pigment just literally slides off the surface. So we can now focus solely on the nose. So I'm gonna go in straight away with the black just to help map out those nostrils. And I'm just gonna add like one or two layers into the nostrils and then we can keep adding a few more just to darken it as we go on. And um, But just help us like map out where they are. I'm just gonna add one or two layers into both of them. Just also go along that bottom edge of the outline. Like that, so they might not be the perfect, perfect shape of the nostrils, but like I said, it is difficult to see because that area is so dark. Um, so as we keep building up the rest of that pigment and colours within the nose, hopefully it'll just all kind of come together. So I think I'm going to go in with the Van Dyke Brown, which is like a lovely chocolatey brown. And I'm going to add a layer on like the top half of the nose, working around this pink area. Kind of work down to the top of the nostrils. And I'm also doing like small circular motions constantly going over like the same areas just so it's an even coverage all over and 
If you've got a blunt pencil, that'll probably work better. But if you've got a sharp pencil like I have here, use it on its side so you get that flatter kind of surface to work with. And it'll mean that you can shade in that area a lot quicker as well. It'll give you a much kind of softer line. I'm just going to work down the center a little bit as well. Like that. I'm going to work into that pink bit using the Herculanum Red Luminance Pencil. This is a lovely like beige pinky tone, literally the perfect colour for what we're after. I'm just going to add a little bit into that area and also just work into the edges as well so it all looks kind of blurred and blended together so we've not got two separate things. Work into that surrounding pigment as well. So I'm also going to add a little bit of the dark indigo, which is a really lovely, like deep, dark blue. I'm just going to add a little bit again to the top half of the nose in like those blue areas. Just by keeping my pressure super light and adding like one really faint layer, it's going to keep it quite subtle, but also capture all those colours we can see in the nose as well. Maybe add a little bit at the bottom half. Like that. I'm also going to go in with the manganese violet. Now this is obviously so vibrant that you're going to think, why on earth are you using that? <laughs> but trust me, if you just, again, just literally do what we've just done. So keep it super light pressured and just add like one really faint layer into the top half of the nose. It'll keep that pigment really subtle, but also just make the whole thing look a lot more lilac-y. Like that. A pinky little bit in the middle. I'm going to go in with the Warm Earth 5%. And it's kind of a similar colour to what we added just before, that Herculanum Red, but slightly darker. Just work into the bottom half of that little like pink speck in the nose and then also go in with the Warm Earth 40% which is a bit more saturated, a little bit darker and also do the same thing, work into like the bottom half and add in any really subtle details into that section and carry that pigment around it as well a little bit. You then want to go back in with your Van Dyke brown and add another layer into those like chocolatey brown areas in the nose. I'm going to leave, I think, the top like right hand side because that's quite pale and quite blue. But the rest of it kind of in the middle of the nose around this pinky area is quite brown. So you want to add another layer of your Van Dyke brown. Everything's just like a constant build up of colour. And at the minute you might notice that it's picking up some of that grain from the Fabriano paper that's layered underneath. Um, but it will smooth out the more kind of layers we add just because it looks grainy, as tempting as it is to press down hard. Um, don't, because <laughs> you don't really need to on this paper. Keep your pressure super light. And it'll just naturally blend out anyway. I'm then going to go back in with that black. Now that we've kind of darkened most of the nose, I'm going to go back in and add another few layers to those nostrils. So we're kind of gradually darkening everything, but like all together.
So the shapes are actually really hard to see because it is so dark. So I'm just kind of blurring those edges by shading over the line so it's not like a perfect, um, like the perfect set shape of the nostril. It's going to kind of blend in with the rest of those dark pigments around it. And then again, you just want to go over that outline of that bottom edge. I'm going to go in now with the cold grey one into the top right hand section at the top of the nose add a layer over all of those lovely colours to help blend them together and also just slightly brighten that area as well because that's kind of where the light is directly hitting it, like the brightest part of the nose. And then I'm also going to go in with the silver grey luminance pencil, which has that lovely um, like subtle blue tint to it. Again, just add a really light layer again into the same area. And then also with your white Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle pencil, add another layer to help brighten it up and smooth out that grain that it's picking up from underneath. adding a little bit of highlight into that pinky area Next up I'm going to go in with the dark sepia, which is a really dark brown. I'm working to those areas that look brown, where we added that uh, Van Dyke brown earlier. Again, keep your pressure super light and do like small circular motions to create the texture of the nose and to keep everything smooth. I'm going over um, some of the areas that are slightly darker, like this detail um, just around that pink part of the nose. You might also want to do some elongated 
little lines kind of flicking out from the nose so it merges with that surrounding fur. Not loads, but just a few here and there. You want to go in with the black again into those nostrils. I'm going to use a little bit of the walnut brown to add to those brown tones. It's slightly darker than the Van Dyke brown, but not as dark as the dark sepia. Maybe work slightly into that pinky area. I'm going to go back in with some of these pink colours again, so I'm going to use the Herculanum Red just to bring back a bit of vibrancy in that pinky area of the nose, just a tiny little bit. Then you want to go in with your Warm Earth 40%. I'm actually going to use this in those brightest parts of the nose, like down in between the nostrils, and not necessarily the brightest parts of the nose, but like in the mid-tones, um, kind of in the middle of the nose coming down, you want to just use this to brighten up certain areas. Gonna add a little bit of the Van Dyke brown into this pinky area to add a bit more of a shadow. And you'll probably find at this stage that the drafting film isn't really taking many more layers. It's hard for things to kind of show up as, as much as you might like. That's why it's important to get all these like subtle colours in there from fairly near the start.
you want to go back in with your dark sepia just kind of flicking between a few pencils now just to keep building up that tonal value We want to also draw in some of these textured details. And then I'm also going to go in with the Payne's Grey, which is a really dark, um, kind of cold grey kind of colour and very lightly outline the top edge of the nose. And then extend some of those lines out into the fur. And then use this to just build up a little bit more of that detail and texture within the nose like all those tiny little squiggles, any like tiny marks you can see, make sure you've drawn them all in. You can also build up a few more of these textured hair details and like darker lines within the fur.
So now all that's left for us to do is to pull out those highlights in the nose. So I'm firstly going to go in again with the white Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle Pencil and very lightly again just work into any areas that need to be brightened. It'll only be quite subtle. We'll just add it a little bit just above that right nostril. You might also want to work into the top right hand section again of the nose where the light's directly hitting it. That's kind of the brightest part really. And then you want to finish off by going in with the craft knife slice tool and there's like some little bumps and little specks on the left hand side of this pink area that's the main bit that i'm going to work into and then you can just add in any extra little highlighted marks specks and dots just within the nose and just to keep adding to that detail I'm just going to go back in with that white just to brighten the very bottom bit here And then just to finish off, I'm going to use the Warm Earth 40% again. Just work into this little bit of fur just above the nose. Kind of bring back that pinky beige colour to it. So we're going to draw in all of these whiskers and other details once we've finished the rest of the body. Um, so we're going to make a start on the body in the next part, part six, I think that'll be. Um, and yeah, like I said at the start, I will show you how to create that like blended out gradual finish to the body. Um, because we're not going to be drawing straight to the edges, we're going to fade it out into the paper. And also how to get it looking like slightly out of focus and blurred as well. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this part of this tutorial. Hopefully it's been a bit of a shorter one. And we've got the whole face done now, so literally just the body left to do. Please let me know what you thought of this tutorial in the comments below. And remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel to see more art related content, vlogs and tutorials, everything like that. I've also got over two years worth of animal coloured pencil based tutorials over on my Patreon, which I've also linked in the video description below along with the line drawing, the materials list and the reference photo for this badger. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll be back very shortly with part six.